Despite the text or lack of, inside this box is a Chromebook Plus model. It's the new 2024 HP Chromebook Plus 14A. It's a 14-inch clamshell Chromebook that's going to have some decent internals and software benefits thanks to that Chromebook Plus status. It's another Chromebook that I first saw back in May at the Google Showcase event, much like the Acer Chromebook Plus 514 that I unboxed and reviewed recently on the channel. And like that one, it also features the Intel Core i3 M305 processor. I posted on X and Threads last week when this was reduced in Amazon's back to school sale. I'll include my affiliate links in the pinned comment as usual if you want to check it out. For now, let's get into the unboxing and take a look. So, USB-C charger as expected. Obviously, I've got a British wall plug here. And it's looking like it's just a 45 watt USB-C charger there, so not a 65 watt as we see on some Chromebooks. I think they still claim you can charge up to 50% of the battery in about half an hour, so I'll check that out obviously before I do a full review, but for now there's the charger. Let's get the Chromebook out. Obviously the mandatory information that you're probably not going to read in a nice envelope for you there. Okay, and the Chromebook itself. Let's take a look. Pop open the kind of eggshell packaging. And here it is. Let's get rid of that. The initial feel, the weight's not too bad. I'll pop up on screen what it's weighing in at. Let me get it out of the plastic sleeve. Okay. I've got it in a silver color here. I think that's what makes it the Amazon exclusive. I think other retailers are listing it as grey, certainly in the UK, so you may get a slightly different colour depending on where you buy it from. Uh, yeah, full plastic build, and you've got that kind of mirrored embossed sort of HP logo on the lid there. And then, of course, you've got the Chromebook Plus branding in the top left-hand corner. So if you watch my video on the other HP 14A that I unboxed earlier in the year, uh, you know, the build quality on that one didn't blow me away, so can I click the mouse trackpad while it's closed here? No. So that's already a, uh, a point up or uh, getting back to uh, normal for this one. Let's just get this cover out of the keyboard deck. By the way, do stick around to the end of the video if you want to see this HP compared a little bit against this the Acer Chromebook Plus 514 that you may have seen on the channel recently unboxed and reviewed. They've both got the same processor, they're both 14-inch Chromebook Plus models, so it might well be that you're comparing these two if you're looking to make a purchase decision anyway. And I'll show you the ports. So over on the left-hand side, it's just the USB-C for power, data, and display out, and the headphone audio jack. And then if we move around to the right hand side of the Chromebook, you've got a second USB-C port and a full size USB-A port. They're all 3.2 Gen 1 ports, no HDMI port obviously and no micro SD card slot. So pretty minimal on the ports again. I should mention it's also Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth 5.3 compatible. So fairly up to date there. Let's have a quick look underneath. So. Yeah, we've got a grill across the bottom for the fan for the processor. Hopefully, again, it'll be fairly minimal on heat and on noise, but we'll find out in my full review when I get to post that. So do consider a subscribe and check the bell if you want to see that. And then you've just got the two rubber stands all the way across, so it should keep it pretty sturdy. Okay, let's have a look inside. Opening it up, let's see, do we get 180 degrees back on the screen? No, we don't. That's kind of disappointing. I think that's um, similar, if not the same chassis, as again we saw on the other HP 14. So I'll kind of give you an impression of the angle there. So it's going back far enough, I'm sure, to be comfy to use, but just kind of used to most Chromebooks with the screens now going back 180 degrees against the keyboard. Um, but we're obviously not getting that here. Let's just test for flex in the chassis. Yeah, it is moving about a little bit there. A bit like the other HP 14A, because I think they are essentially sharing the same chassis. And although it's not a lot of movement, it is still able to click the touchpad there. We've got the speaker grills uh, facing up on the top of the keyboard there, not underneath, which is good to see. Q 
keyboard itself so you know all fairly clicky sort of medium or shallow to medium keys you can see we have got um, more of that US style layout of the keyboard which obviously if you're in the US the, the key layout you'll be used to the smaller return key uh, we usually have a slightly larger one in the UK so just to be aware of otherwise yeah they've got a bit of texture to them as well but yeah generally feel okay it's also worth pointing out with the keyboard deck that HP have done that thing they like to do which is to cram in even more function keys in the top row so there might be something you either appreciate or don't so you've got things like the media pause play button the microphone mute button there uh, and you've also got this sort of menu uh, button that you don't see on all Chromebooks you can notice the keys are that slight bit smaller for it but you have got a bit more packed in there so worth being aware of that too. I should also mention the keyboard isn't backlit on this one I'm not sure if it's an option on the range at all I'll try and confirm in the full review but certainly no backlighting on this one. Touchpad yeah it's not loose uh, feels fairly responsive so we'll see how that is as I get some use out of it and obviously you've just got the Core i3 uh, sticker on there for that Core i3 N305 processor that we've seen as I mentioned in quite a few of the Chromebook Plus models so yeah it looks fairly smart on the keyboard deck okay so it hasn't powered up on me opening it of course let's see if we can get it to start up Sometimes, and it can be quite usual, you need to get some actual power onto the Chromebook for the first time for a new Chromebook to let it power up. So again, as you may have seen in some of my other videos, I'm just going to cheat and use my Charmaster 100 watt power bank. I'll link to that in the pinned comment as well. So the nice thing is this power bank is strong enough to power and charge devices like a Chromebook. So I'll just plug into the left hand side USB-C there and we'll just power up start up the Chromebook and we can see it probably doesn't have a flat battery but we don't know how long it's been sat on a shelf somewhere. Here we go Chromebook Plus boot up screen and we're into it obviously to be set up for a new user and if I hover over the battery down there yeah it's at 81% so it's obviously been sat in a warehouse for some time but that's not a concern at all. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and get set up with my test user and then we'll take a quick look around a few bits. If you do want to see the Chrome OS setup process, I'll link to a video where you can see me walk through that in a bit more detail. Okay, so I'm cheating slightly. I've just jumped into guest mode, just have a look at a couple of things before the Chromebook gets a chance to update. So it's running Chrome OS version 122. That's from back about March time. We're on build 128 now, so obviously I'll get that updated. Um, let's have a look at the additional details. So the update schedule, you're going to get updates until June 2033, which again ties into other Chromebooks we've seen with this processor. And if we go back and jump on diagnostics, so we can see we're at 98% battery health, which is interesting. Let's see if that levels out to 100% or if that's just what that is, a bit odd with it being brand new, and yeah, zero cycle count, which is good to see. Okay, so let's actually get this updated, and then I'll get set up and logged in with my test user. Okay, just logged in with my test user while it's setting things up. One thing to mention, there is a full HD IPS non-touch screen on this model. By default though, it's running at 1536 by 864. So just come into settings, search for display, and you can just bump that up, get that up to 1920 by 1080 in the native setting there to run at the full HD resolution. There we go, much better. So to cover off the core spec, I've got the Intel Core i3 N305 processor, I've got eight gig of low power DDR5 RAM, and I've got 256 gig of UFS storage. So hopefully it's a little bit quicker than EMMC storage. There's probably some variations on that you may notice in different regions. When I get to the full review, I'll try and call out all of those. And for the screen, it's a full HD IPS non-touch screen in a sort of matte finish at a claimed 300 nits of brightness. And I've got to say so far, just on initial impressions, it does look quite nice. Nice and bright, colors look good. It all looks quite sharp and it's, yeah, looking pretty impressive for the screen so far so we'll see what I make of that when it comes to the full review. 
And at the top of the screen, we've got the full HD webcam, of course, being a Chromebook Plus model. And it's got a privacy slider, which operates very easily here. And being a Chromebook Plus model, of course, as well as the hardware meeting a minimum spec, you've also got other benefits like the Gemini app baked straight into the OS. So as a little bonus, as mentioned earlier in the video, here's the Acer Chromebook Plus 514 on the right and the HP, of course, on the left. Just to give you a quick visual overview of both of them and a couple of key differences that you can spot already. Do check out the review and the unboxing of the Acer that's already on the channel and do check, depending on when you're watching this, if you're watching it in the future, look for the review of the HP as well. I'm sure you'll want to be comparing both of these if you are looking to buy a 14 inch Chromebook Plus with the Intel Core i3 N305 processor. So just some visual differences straight away. Uh, the screen on the HP here is looking brighter to me. I could never see an official stat for the Acer display. Keep in mind this is the non-touch version of the Acer. The Acer with the touch screen might be slightly brighter. Uh, keyboards, obviously I've called out some of the, uh, the key differences with the layout of the HP keyboard already. You've got that deeper key travel on the Acer compared to the slightly more shallow key travel on the HP. Both of course have got the speakers on the keyboard deck which is a positive. It's just a case of trying to gauge which has the better sound. The overall footprint you can tell of the Acer here on the right is slightly larger. If you look at the bezels for example you can see they're a little bit bigger and where the screen hinges it's that much further forward. But do remember the screen on the Acer does go back 180 degrees compared to how I've shown you the screen not going back as far on the HP. The Acer also has the more squared off, slightly larger touchpad, I believe, but the one on the HP here is obviously more rectangular in size. Um, slightly smoother feel to the Acer, probably just with that ocean glass branding. But again, remember it's not glass, it's just glass-like feel. Let me close them up and just show you a quick comparison of the ports. So the Acer on the bottom here and the HP on top. So the Acer has got that slightly larger footprint and on the right hand side here you can see it's got a full size USB-A as well as the USB-C and a Kensington Nano port compared to the HP which just has the full size USB-A and USB-C port. On the left hand side of the devices now, so the Acer on the bottom, the HP on the top again. So they've both got a USB-C port, so they've both got dual USB-C so you can charge from either side of your desk. But you can see on the bottom there the Acer also has a second full-size USB-A port and next to that it's also got a micro SD card slot which doesn't feature on the HP at all. Neither of these have HDMI ports but of course you could use a dock or a hub to output your monitors as I often show in my full reviews. So overall the Acer offering more ports but perhaps the HP staying a bit smaller in its footprint and a little bit thinner by the looks of it as well. If you want to see more of that Acer and other Chromebook Plus models I'll link a playlist on the left for you now to watch next. Otherwise if you want to check out the other HP 14a I unboxed earlier in the year that's the one with the Intel N100 processor that's on the right for you now. Cheers.